if you see me do like this, well, that, that means you need to say amen. <laughs> or say shut up or something. Uh, we're, we're so, uh, so glad to be here. You're so blessed to have Pastor John Randolph. Uh, I consider Pastor Randolph a friend. He's just such a regular guy. Amen? Amen. I'm a person that don't care for stiff-collared preachers. And uh, I travel around quite a bit, and I run into a lot of stiff-collared preachers. And uh, I kind of keep my distance from the stiff-collared preacher. <laughs> because the pastor, the church, should be serving to all. Amen? Amen. I, I know you feel that way um, about your preacher. I certainly do. Pastor, I certainly appreciate you. And uh, just encourage it just to keep on keeping on. And, uh, and, and God has a, a great big reward for you waiting in the door. Amen? Amen. Uh, we are so so privileged to be with you today. And, and one of the things I like about coming over here is, of course, is I get an extra hour to preach. Um, <laughs> I noticed you have an unsaved clock up there. <laughs> that clock up there thinks that it's, it's uh, 10 after 11. But that's not true. <laughs> over in God's own country, over in the Chicagoland area, it's only 10 after 10. Okay. <laughs> so um, it's only fair that we stick with the time. Amen. Amen. And, um, so uh, we'll be out, you know, I am thinking maybe 2.30, or <laughs> than 3, something like that. And uh, cause, oh, I have got a big mouth. And uh, I am long-winded, and, and I've got a whole bunch of stuff up here. In fact, I'm planning to preach maybe four or five books of the Bible. Amen. Amen. And, uh, just, um, I, I was telling these young ladies down there, I was thankful to see these young people sitting so close to the front where they could get some of the spit from the pulpit. <laughs> uh, we call them showers of blessings at the mission. <laughs> For some reason, I just like this church. Amen? Amen. It's a sweet spirit in this place. And uh, I thank you so much for your spirit. This morning in Sunday school, um, I just heard it, and just an emphasis on the Word of God. I heard an emphasis on the Word of God. I heard an emphasis on the Word of God. And I'll tell you that gets me excited. Amen. Amen. Um, you know, there's a lot of problems in America. There is some serious problems in America. But I believe the, the greatest problem in the face of America is among those of us who say we're saved. Amen. You know, um, I'm told that the deficit, uh, the national deficit, is like $16 trillion. Now, I'm not sure what that means. I'm really not sure what that means, except that I do know that that is a whole lot. <laughs> One day in the garage, about a month ago, I was listening to the radio, and they were trying to describe a trillion dollars. And one person said that if you were to pay back a dollar a second for 32,000 years, you would have paid back one trillion. <coughs> and I thought to myself, wow. But I'll tell you what's worse. What's worse is most of the population of the United States of America is not saved. And my friend, we're not doing it. We're not getting the job done. We're not getting the job done. Most professing believers in America has never read the Bible true from, from cover to cover. Most professing believers does not pray daily, has never led anyone to Christ, does not know a plan of salvation, will not tithe. There's a huge problem among those of us who say we're saved. And I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you. Everyone can do a little something. Amen? Amen. Everyone can do something. That's really what what Thanksgiving is all about. Uh, the early settlers here in America, um, they were thankful for what God had done for them. Amen? And they came here for um, Christian liberty. They came here so that they would be free to serve God. And, and, and they were thankful. You know, uh, Thanksgiving is, is primarily a, a, a time of, of thanking God for the ingathering. Amen? The ingathering of all of the wonderful crops and as we drove over here early this morning, uh, of course, I was born on a farm. My family moved to Boston when I was only 15 years of age, but I'm a farm boy. And as I drove over this morning, and, uh, the, to see the fields that were harvested was just a beautiful sight. To go into the grocery stores and, and to observe all of the fruits and veggies and the meats and so forth, it's all because of an end gathering. Amen? Amen? And we need to be thankful. Amen. As believers, we have so much to be thankful for, do we not? Yes. I mean, there is so much available to us nowadays. Yes. 
There's so much available to us, and yet we're not doing very much. I want you to turn with me this morning to the book of Leviticus, chapter 23. And in a moment, we'll begin reading um, in verse number 38. You see, uh, the early settlers, they had uh, the end gathering in mind. Basically, uh, Thanksgiving is, 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 is a biblical feast. It's, it's basically the, the Feast of Tabernacles. The Feast of Tabernacles. And we want to take a look at that this morning. I want to preach a message to you. The title of the message is Thanksgiving is the solution for you to live. Thanksgiving Amen. is the solution for him to live. You see, Thanksgiving is a compound word. Amen. Thanksgiving is far more than just one day of the year where we sit around the table and eat turkey and ham until we bust. That's really not what it's all about. Amen. <laughs> Everything in America seems to be moving further and further and further away from God. Thanksgiving Day is not just your day where you sit around the table and eat till you bust, overshadowed by Black Friday. Come on, sir. And Cyber Monday. And some kind of a Tuesday and a funny looking Wednesday. Amen. <laughs> not what it's all about whatsoever. Follow along with me as I read. I'm reading from the King James Bible, but I'm reading in Leviticus chapter 23, beginning in verse number 38. The Bible said, Beside the Sabbaths of the Lord, and beside your gifts, and beside all your vows, and beside all your free will offering, which you give unto the Lord, also in the 15th day of the seventh month. You know, um, the, the Feast of Tabernacles was a little earlier uh, than, than our celebration of Thanksgiving, but uh, with many of the same ideas in mind. When you have gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. God says, I want you to keep this feast, but I want it parenthesis and worship. Parenthesis with Sabbath days which I think is very interesting. And you shall take you on the first day the burrows of goodly trees and branches of palm trees and the burrows of thick trees and willows of the brook and you shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. And you shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. It shall be a statue forever in your generations. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month. You shall dwell in booths seven days all that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths. That your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. And Moses declared unto the children of Israel the feast of the Lord. And then turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 16. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verses 16 and 17. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verses 16 and 17. Boy, I'd love to hear the pages of those Bibles first. Amen? By the way, I'm a Bible thumper. Amen? And we'll be doing quite a bit of thumping up here between now and about 2.30. And by the way, I was downstairs this morning and I saw them carrying in all that stuff. You can smell it, can't you? And, and I asked one lady, I said, what do you call this? A carry-in meal or a, or a potluck dinner? And she said, well, I think we refer to it as carry-in. And I, I was so thankful to see that they had an electric uh, outlet there with the warmers and so forth. Because if they did, that stuff would be awfully cold by the time we did. <laughs> <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 16 Verse 16 and 17, the Bible says, Three times in a year shall all thy meals appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, in the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and in the Feast of Weeks, and in the Feast of Tabernacles, and they shall not appear before the Lord empty. Every man shall give as he is able. God says, listen, I realize that not everyone has the same gifts and abilities. But I heard it mentioned from this pulpit this morning. Everybody could do something. And all God's people say? Amen. Amen. Notice what the Bible says. Let me back up just a ways. They shall not appear before the Lord empty. Everyone has something. Amen. Whatever you have, it came from God. 
God says, do not show up empty. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he hath given. My text is the last part there of verse number 16. They shall not appear before the Lord empty. They shall not appear before the Lord empty. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7, we have nothing that we did not receive. Everything that we have, every single thing that we have comes from the hand of Almighty God. What God is saying here is, do not come to me empty or in vain, void, without cause. I've given you everything. He's saying, bring me something. He's saying, bring me something. Did you bring God anything today? Did you bring God anything today? Did you bring him? See, it's all about, it's all about gratitude. Amen? It's all about gratitude. And there's so many ingrates today in the church of Jesus Christ. Just not very happy. Just not very happy. Just not very happy. Uh, doesn't really have very much good to say about anybody or anything. But if I'm reading this Bible correctly, we have a lot to be thankful for. By the way, if you're here today and you're saying, my friend, you have so much to be thankful for. Amen. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, beginning in verse number 16, Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything, maybe not for everything, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning who? It's already been quoted from this book this morning. I thought for a minute this fellow was going to preach my message. <laughs> <laughs> if he quoted one more verse, I would have jumped up. I would have told him, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Many professing believers here in North America presume to appear before God with empty hands. Hearts void of the basic character quality we call thankfulness. Thankfulness. Not happy. Just not happy because of what they don't have, thinking it would make them happy. It's deception. Many, many professing believers today are not happy because of what they don't have. If I just had what I wanted, then I would be happy. That's deception. If you can't be happy for what you have, you wouldn't be happy no matter what you have. You heard that from... One of the testimonies this morning, Brother James Hester, he talked about how he went through the program and he completed the program and, and he really was excited and he thought he had it all together and he joined the military because that's what he thought he wanted. But then when he got it, you know the rest. And it happens all of the time. Many professing believers today are described in Romans chapter 1. Turn with me to Romans chapter 1 and begin in verse number 21. Romans chapter 1 and beginning in verse number 21. I travel and preach a lot and oftentimes I'm asked to stand near the back as the people are going out and, and there's always a few high maintenance people at every church. I know that pastor doesn't have any here. Amen. I'm talking high maintenance. Their problems just cannot be solved because they won't take responsibility. And so since I'm the new kid on the block, they're waiting to hit me with all their problems. <laughs> and so the Lord, uh, several years ago, gave me a boilerplate question for these high maintenance people. And the question is, are you reading your Bible every day? As soon as I get started, I cut them off. Are you reading your Bible every day? And the answer is almost always no. No, I'm not reading it every day, Pastor, but if I could just continue to explain, I said, no, I'm not a Houdini. I'm not a Houdini. I'm not a magician. I have to read it every day. I have to heed it every day. Amen. That's right. Notice what the Bible says in Romans 1. And again in verse number 21. Be careful, folks. The Bible says because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. This is an indictment. Neither were thankful. Maybe you're here today and maybe you're just not very happy. The young people, Young people, you listen up real carefully. Be careful, be careful with the poochie lip. I don't know what it is about young people, but it is so easy to get the poochie lip. <laughs> Especially around dinner time. I don't care what's made. Amen. <laughs> what's wrong with you? I don't want no more of that. 
Secular humanism is, is the thinking that, well, you know, I'm okay with just all getting along. I'm okay and you're okay. Too many altars. Pluralism. Too many altars in America today. I don't agree with all these folks. Amen? Amen. I don't agree with all these folks. I don't believe that all roads lead to heaven. I totally disagree with many of these folks. Anything besides what they besides what they said the Lord, I don't agree with. Amen. I believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. I believe that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. I believe that marriage is to be between one man and one woman. Amen. I believe that life begins at conception. Amen. Period. Because that's what the Bible teaches. Amen? Amen. And listen, too many professing believers are waffling anymore, Pastor, on these, on these very important things. I'm asking professing believers, well, how do you feel about this uh, issue? Well, Pastor, um, you know, uh, you know uh, I, I really think you have to be careful, you know, uh, because, you know, I mean, uh, a lot of these folks are really good people. <laughs> <laughs> Appearing before a holy God with empty hearts and empty hands is a violation of the holy word of God. Let me ask some questions today. Do you read your Bible every day? If not, my friend, you're empty. It's emptiness. God says, do not appear before me empty. How <coughs> you read your Bible every day? If not, why not? Have you ever read the Bible from cover to cover? If not, why not? If you've been saved more than a year, you should, you, by now, you should be almost done. Do you pray daily? Are you in church on a regular basis? And if you are, are you involved in your church? <coughs> you need to be involved somehow. Amen? Amen. Every believer should be involved somehow, doing something. <coughs> Do you tithe? Do you witness to the laws? Can you name the books of the Bible from memory? <coughs> By the way, if you can't do that, but I challenge you to go home this afternoon. Don't even go downstairs for any lunch. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> you can memorize you better hungry. Amen. As soon as you get to memorize, you can have a piece of chicken. Amen. <laughs> are you committed to serving God until you die? Or are you just, are you just hoping for the best? Too many people are coming to God with nothing and pretending that it's worship. Did you show up today? Did you come to church today empty-handed, just kind of hoping that maybe something would happen? Or did you come because you love God? Because you want to gather with the saints of God? Because you want to worship God in a collective setting? Because that's a little foretaste of glory to God. It's coming.